Hey gang, it's JC and this is the Daily Dose for Monday, December 17th, 2012. A combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Clayton. We have great TV archives up top, JC's eye candy below, we'll get to that in a minute. This is going to be a weird one today, folks, I'm warning you ahead of time. And the results of our rock and roll poll question from the weekend. Approximately how many movies will you have seen in a theater when the year is up? How many movies will you have seen in a movie theater by the time 2012 is up? Number one answer, and I am surprised by this, 87% of you said fewer than 10. Fewer than 10. Uh, another 12% of you said between 10 and 30. Only 1% said between 30 and 50. And 0% said more than 50. See, in 1999 and 2000, I saw about 130 movies. And I know, I, I think there's validity, uh, validity to the claim that uh, people sometimes say movie critics see movies in a different way if you see so many. And I don't disagree with that, but you can still discriminate. You can still have good judgment, but that's a discussion for another show. All right, let's move on to uh, today's Rock and Roll poll question. If you could choose only one answer, if you could choose only one answer, would you say the Connecticut shooter was sick or evil? Now, we're going to come back around to that here in just a couple of minutes, but for right now, if you could choose only one answer, would you say the Connecticut shooter was sick or evil? All right, come back to it. Jump ahead, as I said. Just finished watching This Is 40. As a member of the St. Louis Film Critics Association, I get all the movies ahead of time. Don't have to go to movie theaters sometimes, although we see a lot of movies in theaters. And uh, this is the latest comedy from director and writer John Apatow. Sort of a sequel to Knocked Up. That's their language, not mine. It opens on Friday. We will have a full review right here on Thursday. Let me just tell you this in terms of first take. In the early 80s, there was an ABC television series called 30-something. And I think it was the precursor to Mad Men, given its wit and intelligence and subtlety, albeit its yuppieism and everything like that. Regardless, I wish that Judd Apatow had seen that series, because for one thing, he probably would have known that if you're going to do a movie like this, you can't wait until 92 minutes into the movie to begin to show the story's heart and poignancy. And in case I forget to tell you on Thursday, when you see this movie, and it opens on Friday, um, do not, do not leave the theater until the credits have begun to roll. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Don't leave the theater as soon as the credits pop up. Give yourself a couple of seconds. We'll talk more about it on Thursday. A columnist for the San Francisco Chronicle says, NBA Commissioner David Stern schedules NBA games on Christmas Day because he's Jewish. Sarah Palin's son, Track, is divorcing after 18 months of marriage. Sarah Palin not available for comment. She was too busy tweeting about how gay people are destroying the sanctity of marriage. If you're looking for a good timeline in your life, let's try this. 48 days until Super Bowl Sunday, 59 days until Valentine's Day, and pitchers and catchers report to Jupiter, Florida in eight weeks. All right, the shooting last Friday in Connecticut marks the end of an absolutely horrific and unthinkable year for mass shootings here in this country, and the year is not over yet. We suffered 16 mass shootings as a country, 88 people dead. That thing that uh, supposedly was posted by Morgan Freeman that everybody got in their, on their Facebook pages over the weekend, surprise, he didn't write it. And uh, Victoria Jackson, who used to be on Saturday Night Live back in the day, for the most part, the only place you've seen her recently is on Fox News, espousing all sorts of ridiculous, uh, illogical, extreme positions, took the opportunity to say that uh, uh, um, <laughs> she used the shooting in Connecticut to, uh, to talk about abortion. Uh, wasn't the Connecticut killer just doing what abortionists do every day? Those are her words. She also found a way to throw in some Obama hate. All right, so let's dive into this. Um, there have been a lot of complaints, by the way, on Facebook and other places about the covering this story by the news media. Well, everything's been cut by the big corporations. You are now left with inexperienced, poorly chosen bubbleheads sitting in front of the camera. And who did that? Oh, that's right, the job creators, the big corporations who tend to be Republican, by the way. Here in St. Louis, particularly on the weekends, it's like there's some sort of a contest to see who can be giddier on TV. Who could be the most giddy? And the weekends are absolutely the worst. But this is why radio and TV, for example, is so awful. 
Uh, it looks easy, it, it requires skill, and it requires experience to know what to say, to know what not to say, and how to say it, and when to say it, and what the dosage ought to be. And by the way, there's a lot of people who complain about what's on television, and, and just remember this before you start getting too sanctimonious. Um, it is you, it is your friends, your neighbors, your family members who watch the blood and the gore that you're all complaining about. Because I guarantee you, if it didn't produce ratings, the TV stations and the networks would do something else. So don't watch and it'll go away. But you watch it. Maybe you're not personally, but it is your family, your friends, your co-workers, everything. If the ratings weren't there, if people weren't watching it, the networks and the TV stations would do something else. Uh, not enough God in our classrooms. That was the other one I saw a lot of. God's been removed from the classrooms, and that's why we had this. I think it was Mike Huckabee who pulled that one out of his ass over the weekend. Um, first of all, those kids could have been in the middle of a novena, and it wouldn't have changed the outcome. Second, God, yes, because, because uh, God has never been at the center of any disagreements on this planet where people got killed. One idiot said, well... The school, it's the school's fault. They should have done more to protect these kids. Yeah, the shooter blew the door open with an assault rifle. 60 Minutes portrays the mother of this uh, shooter, by the way, as a friendly, charitable, wonderful person. Um, but now we're hearing that she might have been a survivalist and a gun nut who thought the world was about to end and may have engaged in behavior that could have sent this kid over the edge. Kid's got a form of autism, it's called Asperger's. The mother told the babysitter at one point not, not to leave the kid alone for even a minute. Don't even go to the bathroom, she said. Uh, so I guess, can we at least ask the question right now that maybe, maybe it wasn't a good idea to teach the kid how to shoot automatic rifles? Bob Schieffer, by the way, CBS News, tried to get anybody from the NRA on one of the uh, on his weekend talk show, the public affairs shows and the interview shows and everything on Sunday, mysteriously, the NRA people who are who will whore themselves out for any opportunity to be on television, suddenly all of them became unavailable. Black Friday, largest single day of gun sales in history. This idea that Obama is coming for your guns has gotten absolutely ridiculous. He hasn't for four years. You know, even the Democrats backed off of W for a few minutes when he stood on that pile of debris after 9-11 with the bullhorn and said, we're going to find the people who knocked down these buildings. They, get, they cut him a break. They gave him a couple of weeks, a couple of months of just sort of hands off. But no, not in Obama's case, no. There's people who still uh, won't get off because, uh, well, well he, he stood in that auditorium in Connecticut on Sunday night and read off the names of those little kids who died in that massacre. And even, even that wasn't good enough. For these people. The morons are out, folks. The morons are out. Automobiles cause accidents. We should ban automobiles. People stab people with knives. We should ban knives. Some lady killed her husband with a, 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 a vase. We should outlaw vases. Yeah, every time people talk like that, I picture you with an Elmer Fudd hat on. Ridiculing American clear thinking people, intelligent people who, like a lot of us, don't think somebody's right to bear arms should come at the expense of innocent little kids at school or people in a movie theater or anywhere else. Assault weapons, easily available handguns, add some mental illness, throw in some uncontrollable anger, passion, or rage. You know, people aren't using their guns for protection. They're using them to settle arguments, to settle disagreements, and to get even. Now, I've given up the idea of restricting guns. It's a waste of time anyhow. Uh, there's 200 million handguns in circulation in this country, so what would be the point? And I understand some people wanting handguns. I do. I understand some people wanting rifles. I do. And I'm not trying to take away your handguns or your rifles. So it's important that you remember that. Here's a fun little stat, by the way. 32,000 homicides involving guns last year. 32,000. 18,000 of those suicides or murder suicides more than half people still think they're safer with a gun 
There are limits to every other aspect of life in this country. We have free speech, but you can't just say anything you want. There's laws involving slander and libel and harassment. You can drive a car, but you can't drive 100 miles an hour somewhere. You can't gun it through a school zone. It's called order. There's an increasing number of people in this country who just like violence. They want it in their entertainment, their video games, their movies, their TV shows. They want it in their sports, particularly football and hockey. This country is full of people who want to go to war with everybody who just pisses us off. America is a violent society. You throw in some mental illness, toss in some machines that can kill 100 people in 100 seconds, and what do you got? Now, I've been bombarded with social media for the past few days, and I've never been more disappointed in my fellow man, I don't think, in my life. I gave up on Twitter a while back some of the worst people I have ever known on earth. Most of them cowards, by the way, hiding behind phony screen names. But what has surprised me is how perverted people on Facebook are, even though they don't have an anonymity in most cases. Over the weekend, people I used to like, people I classified as friends, I'm not talking about Facebook friends either, I'm talking about friends, have disappointed me terribly with their stupid, poorly thought out, misguided shit. And I, I, and I find it very depressing. So effective immediately, I'm cutting way back on my social media activities. Still going to post but I'm cutting back almost entirely on responding, discussing, commenting. At least for now. See how it goes. I'm not doing this to myself anymore. But I'm sure as hell not going to let any of you do it to me. And to the nice people, the sane people, the rational people, and especially the reasonable people, I'm sorry it has got to be this way. I have a little three-year-old and it's Christmas. JC's Eye Candy. You might have reacted the same way as this person did on Twitter. Check out JC's Eye Candy right below what you're looking at right now. All right, rock and roll poll question again for the week. If you could choose only one answer, would you say the shooter in Connecticut was sick or evil? Answer down in the corner results on Thursday. We update on Mondays and Thursdays. And we're on Facebook all the time, but we are changing the damn rules. The Showgram with J.C. Corcoran is where you find me on Facebook. Come back on Thursday. We'll do a review of This is 40. That's it. J.C.'s Daily Dose for Monday, December 17th, 2012. A combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Clayton. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Hmm. See you later. Bye. <laughs>